hang on to your seats, sports fans. We are off to the incredible Indianapolis mud races. And for the first time anywhere, Bigfoot challenges a monstrous 200-foot mud bog. So may the best monster win. It doesn't take long to figure out that these aren't your average Sunday drivers. They're all part of the annual four-wheel and off-road jamboree. There's an obstacle course, mud races, thrills, and spills. Of course, Indianapolis is known for the big 500 race. But there's more than one way to break into the big time. is Bigfoot, king of the so-called monster trucks, four-wheel drive vehicles that are part of what you might call a growing phenomena. Bigfoot's creator, Bob Chandler, is a man with a giant size good nature. I've been called Bigfoot, and I said, no, that's Bigfoot, I'm Bob, but uh, I don't know, I, I imagine it is, but the truck is what's done it all. You know, I'm just a driver, I've, I've spent nine years putting it together and uh, enjoy it, and we're never done, we're always changing things on it. What, what tickles me more than anything else is the way the kids like it. Kids aren't the only ones who like Bigfoot and the rest of the monsters. Wherever they go, throngs of people gather around to get a glimpse of trucks like USA-1 and Barefoot, the attraction, good old American know-how. I believe it's a machine, you know, uh, it's kind of through the history of an automotive, you know, it's kind of been a battle between the Fords and the Chevys when you come to a racetrack or anything else, truck pulling or anything that you go through that's competition. What does it cost to put one of these larger than life-size trucks together? I really don't have a dollar figure. I always tell people it would buy one heck of a nice house in this day and age. <laughs> Drivers aren't the only big spenders. The fans are willing to shell out big bucks for souvenirs of this special occasion. There's a mini Bigfoot for tiny truckers of tomorrow, plus posters, pictures, t-shirts, and other memorabilia of Bigfoot and his big brothers. Everybody wants to get in on the act. Naturally, Bigfoot stirs up tons of interest, and there are always questions. Well, first thing they ask is how tall is it? How big is it? How wide is it? How, how powerful is the engine? Uh, are you the biggest? Are you the, the widest? And everything else? And I said, no, I've never ever claimed to be any of these things. I just, my truck's Bigfoot and I enjoy it the way it is. And I have no, I don't run any competition with anybody anymore. I just go out and enjoy driving a truck and doing these things. Oh, come on, Bob. Once and for all, how big is it? I don't know. It's big enough, and it's tall enough, it's wide enough. Uh, it's over 10 foot high, and it's over 11 foot wide, and it weighs 13,800 pounds. And it's got plenty of power to spin those tires and do what I want. Easy for Bob to say, but some of the competitors here at Indianapolis are just spinning their wheels, period. Talk about sticky situations. Hundreds of drivers enter the mud races every year. And this is not just any old bog. It's 200 feet long, and they say they've dug it out to seven feet deep. And they push the dirt back in, add a lot of water, stir it up with a backhoe. But uh, I don't actually know how deep Mike went in. I, I can't really see very well from inside after the mud's all over the window. The sport has a strange fascination for thousands of fans who stand out in the hot sun drinking their fill of good, clean fun. Well, it's just mud is fun. <laughs> Machines and just seeing everybody get dirty. It's just fun to watch somebody get bogged down in all that mud. <laughs> Hardly anybody makes it to the finish line. Even Bigfoot can't win them all.
So, why keep trying? I don't know. I've always gotten into four-wheel drives. I've had one since I was 15. I built my first one, and, and every year they get bigger, and every year they get better, so we just kind of keep moving with the times and building them bigger and better. You just see who's got the tallest truck and who's got the baddest one. These days, the baddest one just might be the girl next door. It's the speed and the power and the feeling that that you can compete with the guys and stuff, I guess. As for the guys... I think most of them are really good about it. I mean, they really encourage you, you know. Like, the guys when I just come in, they were, you know, saying, give, them, you know, give it heck and everything. They said, you know, go for it. You don't have to go far to find out that mud racing can also be a family affair, even an uplifting experience. It's really a, a high experience. It really makes you really excited. My heart's beating really fast, you know? The couple that races together, well, they'll probably stick together, even if she did come in four feet ahead of her husband. Uh-huh. No. She walks home. <laughs> 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 There's a different kind of action going on over at the obstacle trials. It's a real workout for four-wheelers. Not everybody can make it to the top. Some come close, and a few of the toughest win out. He's at the top of the Matterhorn. Here he is. Oh, He's got to come down the other side. Let's hear it for Gary Knight from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Mud Hopper 2, the 1979 Chief. For one driver who made it through, the obstacle course seems, well, not much of an obstacle. I just drive this truck every day and play with it. And it stays together for me. So I just play. Now remember, this time, you only got three chances. When you start and stop, you got three chances to do that, OK? So once you get it going, you got to pedal as hard as you can. Maybe the obstacle trials were child's play for some drivers, but here's where the serious competitors stand out. These big wheelers really know how to put the pedal to the metal, with a little encouragement. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Come on, don't stop. Use it, come on, boy, don't stop. Come on, boy, come on. That's your boy, Hold on, hold on a minute. In a way, it's all just a build-up for the big event. Bigfoot versus a row of junked cars. Bob Chandler says the ride's not as rough as it looks. It's just like a rough road. It's 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 not that bad. It's not as bad as it looks, but uh. I always like crushing cars, I don't know. I think it's the uh, way people think it's uh, destruction. There's need to watch. And now, for an insider's look at the action. I'd love to get on. I'd like to ride in just once. I don't know how I'd get up there, but I'd like to. There's already a Bigfoot 2, and plans are in the works for a Bigfoot 3. Maybe even a floating Bigfoot. Just how much bigger can it all get? Bigfoot's competitors would like to know, too. Bob Chandler, which he owns Bigfoot, and I was talking the other night, and we were discussing that. We, we said, uh, where's it going to stop at? And we both kind of shook our shoulders, and uh, we both said, well, it doesn't look like it's going to stop. So we don't know where it's going to stop at. You know, I'm sure that he's got plans to build a bigger one, and, of course, we have the same thing, too, in mind. I don't know. It scares me sometimes to think about it, because I really, you know, it, it gets to be such a, a catch-up game. Everybody wants to have the tallest truck.
monster truck, should you happen to want one, costs a hundred thousand dollars. Be this much fun. <laughs> La noise. There are about 200 monster trucks in show business, and what they do is carry out the fantasy of every driver who has ever been caught in a rush hour gridlock. Big was my favorite truck. He's awesome. I like when he switches cars. And we get ready. Bigfoot. The monster that awes children and inspired the other monster trucks was created in St. Louis 12 years ago. There are actually five big feet and one Ms. Bigfoot, and among them they travel a half million miles a year flattening cars. Truck pulls and monster shows will draw more than 15 million people this year. And in the car crushing competition, which is based on style, the audience is the judge. This day, Bigfoot gets the big hand. The victim cars are all junkyard special, from which the gas tanks and all glass have been removed for safety. Of course, if you should want to contribute your brand new BMW, Bigfoot would oblige. And you can mash, and you can monster mash, and you my graveyard smash. You'll get on and oblige. The monster show ends with Bigfoot perched over his victims like a victorious gladiator. And 17,000 satisfied fans, like lions after a meal, go out to battle the traffic. 